This is the second module in six on databases. In this module, we will be talking about data models. You'll remember from the first module that we said that data can be structured in a variety of ways. Um, the data that you put in a database system uh, has assumptions about how it is structured, and that is a data model. There are different database systems which are built on different types of data model. And in this module, we will review a number of different database, a uh, number of different data models uh, that are used in, in the field. Um, a data model is a collection of concepts which describes how your data is structured um, and how it can be represented and accessed. Within a particular data model, a schema is the set of descriptions of a particular collection of data. So I may have my data in a tabular or relational data model, and the schema would then be the description of the tabular format that it's used, the columns, the, uh, the data value types, that sort of information. The schema is stored in a data dictionary, and that can be represented in a, a number of different technologies. It can be represented in, in SQL um, for relational databases. It can be represented in XML for XML databases, um, in RDF for um, triple stores, um, and uh, ontological databases, and that sort of thing. And in um, semantics, which is the uh, knowledge management layer, in, in the, uh, the pyramid that we saw in module one, that third layer up, a data model is equivalent to an ontology. Um, we'll mention this a bit in module six. Um, and an ontology is a formal explicit specification of a shared conceptualization. It's um, essentially a schema for a knowledge map. So data models are very important to the functioning of, of databases. Uh, this is an example of a relational data model. Um, this is a data model uh, for a database which is holding uh, genetic and um, image data uh, about zebrafish. And you can see a set of um, connected tables, uh, related tables, each with different data, different data types. But there are uh, a number of relationships prescribed between the different tables, and this gives us the data model for this particular database. Any data in this database um, will be structured according to this data model with the different bits of information that are relevant to a particular data item in the database arranged in this fashion. So the first and possibly the simplest data model to consider is the flat or file data model. Um, this is essentially um, data files that contain records with no structural relationships. It's just the basic data. Um, obviously, um, additional information is required to interpret these, um, such as file format properties. Uh, I may have the data in three different flat file models on my hard drive. One would be basic um, ASCII columns. One might be comma-separated variable. One might be in the form of some uh, basic table, um, HTML table for displaying on a web page. Um, this would be a flat file model. The data is structured in the sense that there are columns and there are rows in this particular case, um, and then there is some representational information about it. Uh, but additional information is required to interpret these files, such as maybe which column is which. Um, and that sort of thing, what the um, spacing is. Um, the first example, or one of the most famous examples in history about this, is the Holrith 1889 patent for compiling statistics. This was for census information. And it describes how every US resident can be represented by a string of 80 characters and numbers. Um, the legacy of this Holrith patent is the um, screen width of 80 characters that was on many early computer screens um, and many early computer formats. So it's nice to see that this very first data model um, 
already had an impact in the history of computing. Let's say an example of a flat file model is delimiter separated data on my hard drive. Obviously, this is possibly not the most useful data model. Um, and so a more sophisticated one is the hierarchical model. In a hierarchical model, as the name suggests, data is organized in a, a tree structure. Um, so you have a number of levels. These consist of records of the same type, data records of the same type. Uh, this may be that at a particular level, there's the same set of field values, um, same set of measurements of data at a particular level. Um, and then there will also be a field on that level to ensure a particular ordering. Um, in a tree structure, obviously, um, with levels, you have uh, parent objects and uh, children objects. In a hierarchical model, there is a 1 to n parent-child relationship between two record types. Um, a child can only have one parent, but a parent can have many children. This was a very popular data model in the late 1960s and 1970s. Uh, historically, IBM's information management system, the IMS system, um, made use of this. And the XML data format that we use today, um, transport agnostic, platform agnostic data format, is fundamentally a hierarchical model. Um, and so if you're working with an XML document in any fashion, you are actually employing a hierarchical data model. Um, an example of a hierarchical data model is the, uh, for example, in this case, we have the CAF database of protein structures in the protein data bank. This has uh, five levels. It has class, architecture, topology, homologous, superfamily, and sequence family. And uh, you have different types of protein structure in this database at these different levels with relationships between the different levels. Um, as you will see, each level, each item only has one parent, but one parent can have many children. So this is an example of a hierarchical data model in use in, in scientific data. The network data model, um, data is organized as um, sets and records. Um, collections and records. Um, a set has an owner, it has a name, and it has one or more members. Um, a record, uh, a data item, may be an owner uh, in any number of sets and a member in any number of sets. And um, this allows the modeling of many-to-many -many relationships. Um, this was a, a data model formally defined uh, by the codicil specification in 1971 and has been used um, in a number of applications. Um, an example is um, shown here of um, things related to um, concrete. Um, and you have a number of sets and you have a number of members. Uh, for example, you have the, uh, the joint seal set, which has as members silicon sealant and asphalt sealant, but the joint seal itself is also in the Richmond pavement. Um, the way this differs from the, net, uh, from the hierarchical data model, though, is that you can see that um, certain um, objects can have more than one parent. For example, asphalt sealant is both um, a member of the joint seal set and also in the patching set. So this is um, a more networked less hierarchical. Uh, the next data model is object-oriented model. Anyone familiar with object-oriented programming will be very familiar with this. Um, essentially what an object-oriented data model does is it adds database functionality to object-oriented languages by allowing persistent storage of programming objects. So if I'm using a object-oriented language like Java, I have a complex object that I'm using in Java, and I want to make that persistent. I want to store it so that I can retrieve it offhand later. Uh, an object-oriented database may be the sort of thing that I want. Um, one of the advantages of actually having a specific object-oriented database, which allows the storage of objects, is that it means I do not need to convert 
information from, from a database representation to application representation all the time. Um, the object and the oriented model allows me to already make use of object oriented structures uh, for doing this. This means that uh, less code is required and also that um, because I may already have a database structure which maps to the types of objects that I'm using in my programs, um, there's a more natural modeling between the two. Uh, this can be very good for very complex data objects and when you have very complex relationships between different types of data objects. Um, and there are a number of uh, commercial databases out there, a number of free databases as well, um, which make use of this um, particular data model. Uh, here's an example um, where I'm dealing with um, maintenance reports um, and um, I have an object-oriented model where I have an object which is a maintenance report and I have a second object which is maintenance activity and there is a relationship between those two and then what I'm storing are instances of those objects um, containing the relevant information um, about those particular data structures according to those data structures. Um, possibly the, the most famous or the most widely used data model is the relational data model and we will be talking uh, more about that and the technology supporting that in, in the next three modules. In the relational data model, data is uh, organized as, as relations, as attributes and as domains. Those are the formal names. Um, more prosaically, a relation is, is a table a uh, relational model databases, relational databases essentially work with tabular data. So a relation is a table uh, which has attributes, which are the columns, and it has rows, which are the, the, the tuples. And the domain in a relational model is the set of values of the attributes that are allowed to take. That is the set of values that the columns of the table are allowed to take, are allowed to hold. And within the relation, within a table, each row is unique. Um, column order is immaterial. Um, doesn't matter what order you have your columns. Um, and each row contains a single value for each of its attributes. So that means that uh, each row, there's only a single value for each column. Uh, there are some relaxation, re relaxations of these um, particular constraints in variance on the relational database model. But as it stands, this was originally proposed by COD in 1969-1970 uh, and 1970 has formed the basis for all the relational database technology that drives our lives today, underpins our lives today. Uh, this is an example of a relational model. Uh, in this particular case, we have um, three relations, three tables. Um, they each have um, two attributes, or one has, gone, has two attributes, two columns, the other one, the other two have got three columns, three attributes, individual rows, and then you can see there are relations between them where uh, the particular um, column, particular attribute in one of the tables is um, expanded in one of the other tables, activity code um, with information associated with it. Um, the associative data model, um, in this particular way, data is modeled as entities having a discrete independent existence and associations. So you could, uh, uh, could envisage this as a, a set of facts and then the connections between the associations between those facts which are meaningful. Um, it's organized as items, um, an identifier, a name and a type, and um, in the terms of links, Links also have each have a, an identifier, they have a source, they have a verb which tells you something about the nature of the link, and they have a target. Uh, an example of how I may represent um, a, a particular data item in, in such a model is, say I was running a database of um, flight time arrivals and departures. Um, flight BA1234 arrived at LAX on the 10th of April um, 2012 at 1.25 p.m. The items that I would have, the individual facts, each of these would have um, an identifier, a name, and a type. They would be the flight, BA1234, the location, LAX, the date, um, the arrival time, and then 
uh, arrived at, on, and at. And then I would have uh, links putting those together. So I would have flight BA123 arrived at LAX, and then there would be on 10th of April 12, and at 1.25 p.m. So I'd put that together in that way, and they could store that in an associative way. This is quite um, similar to the way a lot of the web works, and you can, you can consider the web to be an associative data model in some contexts. Other data models um, that we aren't going to talk about really, uh, but you may be interested in, is semi-structured models. These are graph-based for information that cannot be constrained by schema. Um, the web, for example, in its more general way, is, is a disparate collection of facts. Um, but we could consider it to be semi-structured, and we could try and impose some sort of interface layer on top of it to make management of retrieving that information more, more viable. And then we have object relational data models, which are trying to uh, combine some of the features of the object-oriented model with uh, relational database models. And in that, for example, we add object capabilities to relational systems. Uh, an example of this is, is adding um, uh, location um, tasks to uh, relational databases um, for doing uh, spatiotemporal work, geographical work, storing geographical data. And with that, we will finish this module. Thank you.